Hello guys and gals, me Moon Heart. I knew this was gonna happen, boys. It just keeps getting worse. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what I told you? The biggest cyber war is happening, and there's a whole bunch of cyber attacks just waiting to happen. Everything's about to everything's about to just sort of come cranial. Ladies and gentlemen, to understand, I make these videos because I find the topic very fascinating. I like educating, and when it comes to these videos, a lot of it can be just, hey, you're gonna experience people trying to fearmonger you. These are the kind of videos that you can dial it down. You can understand that the world is not as super spooky as it is. And if it is, there's ways for you to take care of yourself, especially when it comes to your computer and how you interface with the internet, okay? Remember, guys, to keeping care of your data, taking care of your networks, taking care of your computer is an ongoing job. It's a battle one must continue to fight. Anyways, have you ever heard of the name Emotet? Chances are, some of you probably have, because it was actually dubbed as 2010's one of the most dangerous pieces of malware, one of the most dangerous pieces of botnet history imaginable. It's best to assume Emotet is more so as an operation or a group rather than just malware. Emotet itself comes in various forms, but the general idea is the same. A group gets together and finds a way to actually infect computers and then launch loader malware onto it. Now, loader malware in a lot of ways is basically just there to infect a computer to stage computers for a second stage payload. Basically a piece of software that gains access to the system and then allows you to run, you know, your second stage payloads, if you will. So effectively, when they did this, they could run second stage payloads from them. The mealy bugs could, but it was actually used as a way to pimp out and rent out a service to basically all the other criminal groups online. So effectively, Emotet served as sort of like the botnet, sort of like the, uh, you know, people you go to if you want to effectively run a hacks around on a global scale, on a massive scale. They would just be infecting the computers and they would be passing off those infections to much more malicious individuals. In fact, at the time, one of the more scarier groups, uh, one of the more scarier pieces of malware, Ryuk, was basically spreading through Emotet. Do you remember back when we were looking at the COVID-19 emails during like the pandemic stuff and uh, people would be sending, you know, COVID-19 themed messages over email to random individuals. These emails would contain Word documents. Those Word documents would contain malicious macros. Well, a good chunk of those Word documents and malicious macros seem to have been linked to Emotet, which is basically them trying to spread an infection to just everyone under the sun. Now, recently, a new round of emails have been passing, and you might be wondering, but Muda, what, are emails still prevalent? Yes, emails are still the most prevalent goddamn way of infecting a computer. Look, as much as everybody, look, you can make a million PSAs. You wouldn't download a car. I, I would download a car. You wouldn't download a movie. You wouldn't do, you, you shouldn't open an untrustworthy email attachment, dude. People are still going to click it. It's still going to happen. Now, of course, the emails were basically super simple. Some of them were Happy Easter, a bunch of Chinese letters, and then Happy Easter, Bona Pascua, and then they would come with an actual, you know, attachment. Sometimes the attachment could be something really simple, like, hey, did you, you bought this thing off, uh, you know, Amazon, here's your receipt, and that receipt would be an attachment that you would open, and if you executed something that was embedded within that attachment, you may be launching this piece of malware. To understand, that's pretty much what it was going with. Now, over the last couple days, Days, it's turned out that they're actually sending out shortcuts. Now, if you don't know what a shortcut is, a very quick explanation is, is let's say you wanted to open Discord, right? You wanted to open the Discord app. You have the Discord icon on your desktop. That is not the Discord app. That is a Discord shortcut. A shortcut is a .lnk file, which is effectively just a link. It's just basically every time you click onto it, that link tells the operating system, I'm not the program, but the program is right there. Imagine it being a direction to like the program, right? It's not the program, it's just the directions to the program. It's a small file, and frankly, it's just used to link and, you know, create these shortcuts. Now, what's happened is people have embedded, malicious people have embedded PowerShell scripts, PowerShell scripts within these shortcuts, embedding them. Now, this is one example, all right, posted by security researchers of an actual, you know, shortcut. So, SRW73512537 3WM. Sometimes these could be called forms, sometimes they could be called receipt. You see, looking at it, it just looks like it's a random file. The people who are not astute may not look at shortcut, they may not look at the size, they may not even throw this into a virus scanner, they may not open the properties tab and realize that maybe in the target section it actually has some really malicious PowerShell code written in there. If you ever see text like this hidden within a shortcut, do not click the shortcut. 
See, the actual text when blown up is more like this. So inside this long string of draconian magic characters you're seeing, you actually have got C Windows System 32 Windows PowerShell. Now PowerShell is a quick primer, is a very, very powerful task scheduling tool, and it's an absolute godsend for anybody who wants to do a lot of administrative tasks, literally right there on Windows. And if you have a modern version of Windows 10 or Windows 11, you have PowerShell built into your system. And uh, that's pretty much the general gist of it. There's a lot of powerful things you can do. Unfortunately, it's being abused to run malware, and it's through these shortcut links out there. So here, it's basically linking to a shortcut, form.lnk, and long story short, it's then creating a PowerShell reference, a script, and it's connecting you to random websites. In this case, it's HTTP, focusmedica.in, fmlib, ix, bababooey, HTTP, demo34.ckg.hk, service, bababooey, HTTP, collegio unamuno, so random websites, right? So these random websites contain the actual payload, the actual, you know, payloads, the actual, um, you know, loader malware. They contain, believe it or not, they contain the Emotet. So once you've launched the shortcut, you have downloaded the Emotet malware, launched it, and now all of a sudden you now have a loader malware that might be selling your computer out to some random, shady, scary person out there. Listen, all of these malwares are money focused. People are doing this to siphon your money details, your information, whatever you want to call it. That's all that it's about, okay? You know, hacking is not some grandiose thing. It's literally about making as much money as you can. And you have to imagine, with the amount of emails they're sending out and the scale they're sending out, there's a good amount of people that end up clicking onto it, and there's a good amount of people that may end up having things like crypto mining malware installed on their computer. They may have other malicious malware. It's almost usually money focused. In fact, ransomware can often be spread through this vector. Okay, so that's pretty much something you have to understand. Security researchers around the clock, if you follow them on Twitter and social media, have constantly been posting like awareness where, hey, these are a lot of URLs that have been detected. So again, you can look at the random URLs like Garage West Rotterdam. Now, Emotet wasn't really a big of a threat after January 2021. Back in January 2021, federal agencies from the United States, from Canada, from France, from Germany, from the Netherlands, from Lithuania, from the United Kingdom, and and from the Ukraine work together unilaterally to actually reach the host, the critical infrastructure that ran Emotet and actually attack it right from the core. They actually shut down Emotet and for a while we were living in peace. You know, the big Emotet threat was finally over until of course a couple days ago it turns out that yes, Emotet was back up and it was spreading through those PowerShell scripts and through email once again. So yes, Emotet is unfortunately back. One of the largest, scariest, most dangerous pieces of malware is finally resurfaced and it's resurfaced pretty hard leading its way back to the top spot once again so yeah recapping again the whole idea is hey guys we're going to spread this so again to recap the whole idea was these guys would create a piece of malware they would go onto the internet they would send it out via a bunch of millions upon millions of emails would be sent out and provided that you know 10 maybe a thousand people out of a million clicked on that email it would all be for worth it once you click on that email, once you got infected, they wouldn't really be touching anything. They'd just be like, hey guys, hey, we did the infection for you. Now you guys can pay us to infect these people with relative ease, okay? So anytime you went on to like, you know, the dark web and it was all those hacker services, 99% of them were honeypots, but it, God forbid, you know, the one that was real probably was, uh, probably was, probably was working very closely to these people. Now you're going to laugh at it when I say how simple this is. To understand, there's a few things you got to realize. When you're doing virus checks, virus analysis, like when you're tossing things into virus total, right? Because malwares like this are normally polymorphic, right? Which means like a lot of the malware here changes its code usually almost every time that it's ever sent out. In fact, a lot of times it just does that. So if you scan Emotet in one variant and it comes up as, yeah, it's a malware, Emotet can exist in variants that haven't actually been detected by most antivirus softwares, right? So again, antivirus is more than just updating the definitions. You got to be really careful. If the, vi if the file is not trustworthy and your definition of trust is I threw it in a virus check and Windows said it was good, virus total said it was good, everything says it was good, that's still not reason enough. Unless you absolutely trust a program, yes, a program, a .exe file to run on your Windows system, 
then that's something that you can go for. And even when you're not using a Windows system, I know that most of the viruses we cover are Windows. At the end of the day, if you're a Mac user, you are also susceptible to malware. As a Linux user, you are also susceptible to malware. Windows is always usually isolated because they're the largest group of desktop laptop users out there. That doesn't mean that Mac users aren't, you know, free from malware. It's just that you're 10%, I think it's like 10, 9% Mac users to the rest of the Windows users. Linux desktop, like, uh, users... Most of you guys, 1%. I'm one of them, but that's all that it is. So it's usually just Windows people that are in it. Now, that being said, though, if you've got a code change on the file, it may not trip up in a malware check. And that might be one of the ways you get a loader to run. So that being said, even if something passes with green colors on your virus check tools and the file still looks a little sus then you should stay a little bit away from it because chances are you could load something really bad onto your system without ever really realizing it. See, the best type of malwares are the ones that are installed and they're, they remain dormant until actually used months down the road. And by that point, so much damage has been done that trying to reel in from it is, is, is just a crapshoot within itself. At that point, beyond all of it, you need to make sure you check your emails even more carefully. Now, I know that I talk about checking your domains and whatnot, but really, really check your emails. I mean, even beyond just checking domains, headers, subject lines, actually check the contents, the unloaded contents of an actual email. Basically, whenever you open it up, if you get an email from Amazon, make sure that it came from Amazon. If you get an email from Facebook, make sure that it came from Facebook. I mean, really general stuff. But if an email looks suspicious, it looks suspicious. Suspicious. If you ever get a receipt for something um, and you don't know if you bought it, don't open the receipt because chances are you probably didn't buy it in the first place. If you get any weird emails that sort of give you like a generic file, you know, some something to open up, don't open it. Again, really the best type of emails that work are the ones that are super susceptible, super unknown, you know, ones that don't look shady, ones that just look pretty generic. Some people may choose to click on those situations. Again, with these things out in the wild, it's best never to click on anything. If somebody sends you anything over Discord, even if it's a friend, don't open it. Because chances are, if your friend is sending you weird applications that they themselves haven't checked properly, you might get infected without even knowing. Again, be really careful, okay? I know that I'm telling you to be paranoid, but it's really just following a healthy practice of, if that looks suspicious as hell, don't bother clicking on it. And this may be an extreme, extreme variant, but when you're doing any form of like web browsing or you're doing anything where you're doing light computer work, you know, virtual machine software is free and easily accessible by all. VirtualBox, VMware, KVM, whatever you want to call it. Well, KVM is more of the Linux variety, but QEMU, all this stuff, very freely available. If you know that you're going to be browsing the internet and possibly opening up some suspicious stuff, it's always worthwhile to create a quick little virtual machine for Windows and just browse the internet within that. Most people have the ability to do that without ever impacting their system resources. And if it means creating an extra layer of a sandbox between the web browser and your host computer that is one of the cleanest things that you can do so if you do accidentally launch some shady software within a virtual machine or browse that one shady website that launches a file or launches a payload it never should get into your main actual computer you can always just delete a vm and create a new one within minutes and move on with your life without ever having to be paranoid this whole idea of getting attacked by emotet is not something that i want you to fear I, I'm telling you that, yes, while it is a scary piece of software, the ways to mitigate it can be relatively easy if you choose to apply some basic common sense and logic when you're touching your computer. Remember, everybody, data is more valuable than you, and you should definitely take care of your goddamn data. That said, though, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this doesn't fall on deaf ears. Wanted to really educate you about a really, really freaky piece of malware that's now resurfaced on the internet and how to protect yourself from it. That being said, though, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I 